Hey, it's Dave Brown here, host of Now with Dave Brown on AMI. Check out this latest highlight from the show. It's National Accessibility Week, and to mark the occasion, 37 disability organizations and groups have signed an open letter to the House of Commons. They're calling on MPs to ratify amendments to Bill C-22. You've heard lots about that bill on this program. It's known as the Canada Disability Benefit. So to tell you more about the letter is one of the signatories, David Lepofsky. David is the chair of the AODA Alliance and a regular visitor to the show. David, fantastic to chat with you once again. Thank you for making the time today. Always great to be on your program. So the Senate did pass Bill C-22 with some amendments and it was sent back to the House of Commons. How would you describe the government's reaction to those amendments? Stony silence and un un unwarranted delay. But oh. simply the, the <laughs> what happened is when the, the House of Commons passed this bill last fall, with some amendments that a number of us asked for, but not enough. It then went to the Senate and a number of organizations, including ours, said, we still need some more amendments and uh, to make it uh, better. And the Senate did a careful job, studied the bill closely, held many hearings, a lot of hearings, and then passed a discrete list of about six amendments. So they sent it back to the House of Commons and before the bill could become law, uh, it has to be passed in identical terms by both Houses of Parliament, House of Commons and Senate. So the House has to either ratify the Senate amendments, and then this bill becomes law, or if the House rejects any of the Senate amendments, the bill's got to go back to the Senate again, which will take months, mm. and then the Senate has to pass it without the amendments, delaying the whole process. We don't want any more delay. Yeah, the urgency of creating this benefit is pretty much unquestionable at this point when it comes from a poverty perspective and support for people with disabilities. And there, there's already been quite a bit of ping-ponging, let alone, David, the fact that even once it's passed, they still have to go to the provinces and do some more negotiations there. So what's your general reaction to either the slow process, but maybe even more concerningly, the fact that there's been some stony silence since it got bounced back to the House? Well, it really is unfair to people with disabilities. The Justin Trudeau government's been saying, like, end the delay, end the delay, let's get this passed fast. They've been saying this since last fall. Now the ball's in their court. They can't blame this delay on anyone other than the Trudeau government itself. And we're nonpartisan. We're not picking on any party or cheering for any party. We're just saying, you, you said you wanted to move fast. You got the ball. Play the ball. But not only that, when the bill went to the Senate, the minister responsible, Carla Qualtra, was asked pointedly by the chair of the committee that was reviewing it, are you open to amendments? And she said, yes, we're prepared to consider amendments as long as they respect that this is a framework bill that doesn't have all the final details in it. Well, our amendments respect the bill as a framework bill. When the bill came up for third reading in the Senate, the government's spokesman, the government's official sponsor of this bill in the Senate, wasn't happy with the amendments, but said he was voting to pass them. His name is Brent Cotter. So if the minister says she's open to uh, uh, amendments, as long as they respect the bill as a framework bill, and they do, if the government's own sponsor of the bill, who operates on their instructions, voted for the amendments, then the government has no excuse for di dithering now rather than just ratify the amendments and get on with it. Accessibility reporter and journalist Megan Gilmore stopped by the show last week to talk about some of those amendments in depth. And a lot of them, David, really struck me as common sense. Things like uh, insurance companies not being able to do certain kinds of clawbacks. What was the reaction by yourself or maybe even more broadly among some of these colleagues that you've signed this letter with about the caliber, quality and appropriateness of these amendments? Well, they're, they're, they're pretty basic. And let me give you the example, the insurance clawback. Right. The government has said, you know, people shouldn't have their benefits clawed back and we're going to negotiate that provinces can't claw them back. If you're getting a provincial social assistance, they can't they, they can't turn to the federal government and say, um, if you're getting the Canada disability benefit, we're taking that money out of your provincial benefits. That's fine. They're negotiating it. They haven't announced any deals yet. But in any event, after the bill was finishing in the House of Commons, two lawyers in Toronto, who I know quite well, um, came forward and said, hey, there's a problem. Um, 
private insurance companies could claw back this benefit. If you're on long-term disability uh, under your employer's insurance uh, and you get the Canada Disability Benefit, the money that the federal government intends to go to impoverished people with disabilities in these cases may end up going to rich insurance companies' profits. Uh, nobody wants that. So the Senate passed a limited amendment uh, to achieve this and had an expert in constitutional law, a gentleman named Hart Schwartz, who I know quite well, explain why it's constitutional. Well, a couple of days ago, a letter went to the minister, to the prime minister, Justin Trudeau, from the two lawyers who uh, uh, presented the need for, for this to the Senate, explaining why it is needed and constitutionally permissible to have this amendment. That letter was endorsed by all the provincial trial lawyers associations in Canada. That's a lot of lawyers associations. They can't all be wrong. Mm. <laughs> yeah, lawyers don't make a habit of being wrong, especially that many when they come out singing in chorus together. Uh, David, I, I know it's unfair to have you pull out the crystal ball here, but certainly time matters here. This is a time-sensitive issue, not simply because people need this benefit, but because Parliament's going to rise from the summer here in a matter of weeks. What do you imagine the timeline to get Bill C-22 potentially passed as is with these amendments from the Senate it maybe before Parliament rises for the summer, or maybe I should just broaden that question out like a good journalist and say, what's your expectation on a timeline for getting this through? Let's put it this way. There is an overwhelming case for the government to ratify these amendments now. This is National Access Ability Week. We don't need more flowery speeches by ministers about how important people with disabilities are and all that stuff and how we need to provide for them. This is where they can actually put their legislation where their mouth is and give us some real live action. The opposition parties, none have come out against these amendments. No provinces have announced publicly that they're against this amendment. The open letter from now, it's up to 44 organizations. Oh, wow. We've had more organizations sign on. I've just received word that uh, there's another letter from another 13 organizations. I haven't read it yet. I just got my email before I got online. Uh, unconnected with us, saying the same thing. Um, one of the organizations that the minister has quoted most often, Disability Well Poverty, has tweeted uh, that the government should ratify these amendments now. So uh, if the, gov the minister, speaking for the government, Carla Qualtro, keeps invoking the disability communi community's maxim, nothing about us without us. Well, this message is the us. We need this ratified now. Yeah, I'm, uh, I am I, I, I try not to overly editorialize on this show, but I've been a big proponent as well of getting this, getting at least this act through, and then the real hard work can begin of actually negotiating with the provinces and figuring out the number and doing those consultations. Because David, again, even, even if this passes before parliament rises for the summer, there's still gonna be a long road ahead. And then the lawyers are really gonna get their fingers into this one. If our listeners want to help, there are two things you could do now. One is pick up the phone and call your member of parliament's office. You'll call the one, whoever you can get on the phone, the receptionist, anyone, just demand that they ratify the Senate amendments to Bill C-22 now. Or if you want to make it even easier, just say, pass Bill C-22 now. <laughs> uh, and if you want to learn more, we have a C-22 webpage with everything you need to know. Just go to aodaalliance.org slash C-22. David, it's always such a pleasure chatting with you. Your perspective is always so valuable on these issues. I look forward to the next time you and I get to a chat on air or even off the air. Always happy to contribute to your excellent program. That is David Lepofsky, the chair of the AODA Alliance, speaking to you from Toronto. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen. Do you want to dive into more conversations like this? Watch Now with Dave Brown weekdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on AMI-tv or download the podcasts wherever you listen.